Maybe it's just me, I don't know, but when I go to search data science or what data scientists do into Google, I get back a bunch of stuff that really doesn't mean anything, and it's just a bunch of terms that are broad and vague, and you know, it doesn't mean anything at all. So, I am here to fix that today. In just a short couple minute video, I'm here to explain what us data scientists actually do, the tools that we use, and the skill sets that we need to have to solve all these sorts of different problems. Now, it is important to understand that data science is diverse. There's a lot of different skill sets here. We have computer vision specialists, which means dealing with images and video. We have natural language processing people, which means dealing with text and language. We also have everything in between, like just making forecasting models and regression and classification models of all sorts. So there is so much different skill sets here. And even in one data science position, you may one day do computer vision and the next day do natural language processing. It's really up to your own skill set and the problems that your company needs to solve. But even through all this diversity, there's still a ton that pretty much everybody shares in common. Like for example, Python is definitely the industry standard here, along with its associated libraries like NumPy and Pandas that we use for preparing data science stuff. And then we make machine learning models in Scikit-Learn, TensorFlow, or PyTorch. That's pretty much the standard and then very few people stray away from that. Of course, there's times that you would use other languages, sometimes you want to use R or Julia, and sometimes there's reasons you have to use something like Java, Scala, or C++. But no matter what, the majority of data science do code in Python and make these machine learning models all in Python. When it comes to visualizations, of course, there's many libraries in Python as well, like Matplotlib and Plotly that I like to use, but there's also some things that other data scientists use a little more often than I do, like Tableau and Power BI. I just like to do pretty much all my work in Python itself. Probably the most common way to actually get data is to use SQL from relational databases, and that I think every single data scientist I've ever met does know SQL. They may not love it, they may not use it every single day, but they at least understand the syntax of querying and getting joins and manipulating tables so that they can pull from the databases, and if you want, you can use something like Apache PySpark to use that SQL syntax as well to manipulate your data frame objects. So we generally deal with this type of tabular data, which is like relational design, either PySpark or SQL or Pandas or something like that, where it's in a row and column format. Sometimes you might pull from some other type of database too, they're getting more common. You might even have done some web scraping to either pull that into relational format or not, but it doesn't matter, no matter what, you get your data in somehow, and then generally what data scientists do is we might perform some analytics, or we'll make a machine learning model, which is used with scikit-learn, TensorFlow, or PyTorch. What I use is generally the utilities from scikit-learn, maybe some base ones from sklearn, like a random forest or a nearest neighbors, but most of the time I will be using, at least in the problems that I solve in computer vision, I will be making deep learning models. And although PyTorch maybe be the leader in computer vision, I actually prefer TensorFlow and that's what my team uses as well. Now it's important to fully understand that there really isn't a limit on what kind of machine learning models we can make here. And when I say machine learning model, if you don't want know what that is, I just mean some sort of predictive function that takes an input and can try and predict an output. Maybe it's a computer vision model, which tries to figure out what objects are in an image. Maybe it tries to classify what a video is, like are they playing baseball or golf or something like that? Or maybe we're taking language and natural language processing, where someone's talking like me and YouTube is trying to figure out what I'm saying, that's a machine learning model. And there's so many other ones. You could even just be forecasting, you know, like a gold price or all the basic ones like MNIST handwritten digits, try to figure out what the handwritten digit is. I'm just blabbering on because there is so many different problems that you can solve. I, I wouldn't be amazing at the natural language processing stuff right now, but if you have the fundamentals down, which we're going to talk about shortly, uh, something like supervised learning and these statistical concepts and the deep learning algorithms, if you understand those well, you really are able to solve pretty much any of these problems. Are you going to be better at it than all the other people? No, they're going to be more specialized than you are. You're good at something, but we all learn some sort of fundamental concepts so that we're able to at least have an idea of how all of these different problems might be able to get solved if we did want to solve them. And then if we were to, we would just go in more, more in depth at the time into that specific area. Now, if you are trying to learn what these skills are and as well as actually learn the skills, I would just point you to the video description down below. Take a look at all of that content and there's gonna be stuff that really helps you out there. I have it listed so that you can understand what you need to learn for what you're trying to achieve, 
like machine learning or deep learning. And trust me, take my word, you do want to learn deep learning. Machine learning, you should probably learn first and then statistical concepts and data science stuff. But then after that, you should definitely try to progress to deep learning. That's where the world's at. And it's, it's pretty much how we solve these huge variety of problems is deep learning. The classical machine learning is like random forest and key nearest neighbors. It's great to understand, but a lot of the time we need more powerful algorithms. And they are more confusing, but I definitely point you to the video description down below to learn about some of that stuff. Now, whether you're just seeing my face for the very first time or you've known me for a while, I think it's important to see this next section, which is my specific personal preferences about how I can code, you know, what I think is pretty quickly. Of course, everyone has their own preference and that's totally okay, but I'm gonna go over the specific tools that I use, how much I actually know and how much I have to Google and look up. So I think that'll be very beneficial for you. Now, I really can't speak for anyone else here, but I know that as a data scientist in my job, I really don't need to do much front end web development in JavaScript, so I don't know JavaScript. I don't need to do much mobile app development, so I don't use Kotlin or Java, although I have learned them in the past, as well as even if I'm making like a web development app, at least the back end part, I can use Flask or Django to do all of that work in Python itself. And so I really would be rusty in every other programming language out there. There is of course times when you might want to use C++ or Java or Kotlin or JavaScript or Scala or all these different languages, maybe even R or Julia if you like that stuff. I just personally don't choose that. But yeah, I write almost all of my code in Python. I also write most of it in Jupyter Notebooks and uh, I either use Jupyter Notebooks on my own computer using its kick-ass GPU. Uh, I have an NVIDIA 3060 on my computer which can run, uh, at least figure out most machine learning models. If we're doing really heavy duty work, I'll probably pass it off to uh, a server elsewhere or at least a different computer in the company. Uh, but I do most of the work on my own computer in Jupyter Notebooks. Sometimes I use Google Colab, even with the GPU in my computer, just because I find uh, its environment is very easy to set up. So if you haven't heard of that, uh, just go online to Google Colab, and it's just a Jupyter environment that is cloud hosted in, in Python. So if I do have to write, you know, sometimes you don't want your code in Jupyter Notebooks. There's many, many times where you're gonna be writing a script that you're gonna be doing using multiple times. And so, yeah, I would pretty much just write the script in a Jupyter Notebook to play around with it and then convert that to a Python script, which just means a .py file. Uh, you can pretty much just copy the code or do something in Jupyter to convert that to a Python file. Now, uh, once you have it in a Python file, you do often need uh, to use, I, I use Windows entirely, by the way. It's very rare for me that I, I use my own machine in Linux. Of course, sometimes, in, especially if you're doing work on the cloud, you will have to know uh, some basic Linux commands. So I do highly recommend that if you don't already, you get some basic Linux and Windows commands so you can just kind of tool around the file system yourself fairly comfortably and activate Python environments. By the way, for Python environments, I do not use Anaconda. That's a personal preference. I did it first, but I just found it gave me a couple too many headaches. And so I use just VN to make my own Python virtual environments. And I, so I use Python, Windows, I don't use Anaconda, and I, I just use pip to install all of these libraries that I use. Uh, and there's actually a little trick to set up your virtual environment in Jupyter as well. I'll actually link that uh, that, that web page that I've been to way too many times to go uh, to, to make that happen, okay? If I am writing code that's not in a Jupyter environment, I'm probably using VS Code as my IDE of choice. PyCharm is fine, but it's just a little bit uh, more computationally expensive on the computer than I think is really necessary. I think VS Code is just fine, it's nice and quick, and I never have problems using it. Uh, for Git, I generally use the Git GUI. Sometimes it, it's, it can be useful to at least know the Git commands in case you are doing some sort of cloud or SSH environment. It can be useful to at least switch between branches and uh, clone repositories on there and make commits. But most of the time I'm using my GitHub GUI desktop app as well. Uh, just because I find it's a little bit easier to, to commit specific files on there. I can just check different things of what I want to send over rather than trying to do that in a command prompt. And yeah, that's pretty much my coding specifics. So just to summarize, I use Python pretty much all the time. I mostly write my code in Jupyter Notebooks and then convert them to Python scripts after that. Uh, and all the debugging that I may do is pretty much just in Jupyter by printing out various things at different times. It, it seems to work. Uh, people feel free to mock me, like developers feel free to mock me about my bad debugging style. Yeah, I find that I, I solve my problems pretty quickly that way. For the actual environments or, or libraries that I know pretty well, I'd say off the top of my head that I know NumPy, like base Python very well. 
uh, and the libraries, I wouldn't say I know any of the libraries very well, uh, but I know these few libraries pretty well, which is NumPy, Pandas, uh, PySpark, Scikit-Learn, and Matplotlib. And then for the ones that I also use commonly, but I also just forget the syntax all the time, which I have to look up all the time, uh, I look up Plotly and uh, Flask. And, you know, TensorFlow Kira's I know pretty well now, um, but I still look up a fair amount there as well. And I don't actually use PyTorch at all. Um, for those of you that have followed me before I, or earlier, uh, you would know that. But yeah, for the newbies, I do not use PyTorch. It's just not my library of choice. Uh, but I may learn that in the future. I don't know. TensorFlow is usually just uh, the first place that most people look to uh, to find models. It's almost always there. Uh, and PyTorch, there is definitely some reasons why you would need to get a, a little bit more advanced and go into that sometimes. But uh, I still have yet to hit that point entirely, to be honest. So yeah, I hope that answers any questions about my personal setup. Uh, feel free to share your personal setup in the in the in the comments down below. I'm curious what you do, uh, and if you think for me that there's really something that I'm missing out on, uh, and how I could speed up my own development. I, I'm always interested in that as well. Uh, as for others, I'm sure they're interested in seeing uh, the variety of different opinions out there, because it really is just a personal preference uh, at the end of the day. But that's what I've just kind of developed over time into what I think is you know fast for me to code. So I hope that made sense. I hope this video helped you on, <laughs> I'm hiccuping, <laughs> I'm hiccuping, that's what it is. Um, I hope this helped you what, understand what data scientists actually do, uh, as well as uh, you know me in particular as a data scientist, how I actually go about solving these problems. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Uh, I'll see you the next time. I'll see you in the next one, guys. <laughs>